I want to thank you for joining us for another episode of Marking the Times. Uh, my family and I have been in uh, Rio del Sol, New Mexico the last couple of weeks and kind of getting away, some refreshment and the cool weather. And so it was uh, wonderful to get away, but it's always good to be back, as you know. And it's great to be back here with you as uh, we answer questions you all send in on our Facebook page, but also uh, bring regular updates about things that are happening in our world that are significant uh, to Bible prophecy, to the uh, prophetic scenario that God's laid out for us in Scripture. And uh, many of you, I'm sure, have already heard in the news, um, this is a very historic day for the modern state of Israel. And I think it's a, a very significant day also for those of us who are looking for uh, the coming of Jesus Christ. Um, I have uh, here in my hands a, a, a copy of an article and it just appeared in the Jerusalem Post. And again, you'll, you'll hear about this all in all the news outlets, but uh, the title says, Israel and UAE, that is the United Arab Emirates, reach historic peace deal. Um, it's a peace deal that was brokered by President Trump between the nation of Israel and the United Arab Emirates, which is an Arab nation. And uh, it's, it's called, fascinating, it's called the Abraham Accords. I'd like to know, and I'll probably find out later, maybe in can as well, kind of what's behind that. But the Abraham uh, Accords, of course, goes all the way back to Abraham, who's the father of both the Arab people and the Jewish people, but reminds me of the covenant God made with Abraham. But the article uh, says this, Israel and the UAE agreed to full normalization of relations in a phone call with President U U.S. President Donald Trump on Thursday, marking the first peace treaty between Israel and an Arab country in 25 years. Uh, this is just the third ever peace treaty between the modern state of Israel and an Arab state that includes embassies, direct flights, all of that. The other two are with Egypt and Jordan. Uh, the last one was made with Jordan uh, 25 years ago or 26 years ago um, in 1994. But it says Israel agreed to suspend its planned extension of sovereignty over parts of Judea and Samaria to facilitate relations with the UAE and potentially other Arab and Muslim nations. Um, Benjamin, President, or, or Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called the deal full formal peace with one of the strongest countries in the world. Um, two of the, the Middle East's most dynamic societies, they're saying, have uh, now brokered this peace deal. Um, in the Oval Office, President Trump alluded to many more countries in the region normalizing ties with Israel and some very exciting things, including ultimately with the Palestinians, although they immediately rejected this. Um, this agreement ushers in a new era of peace between Israel and the Arab world, uh, Pre uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said. And sources in Washington and Jerusalem said the Trump administration is in talks with other Gulf states to reach normalization agreements uh, with Israel. Now, it's important to remember in all this, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu emphasized he did not and will not remove sovereignty from the agenda. I will never give up our right to our land. So he obviously reserves that. But what's, what's significant about this, and many of you who know Bible prophecy, understand and realize that the event that starts the seven-year tribulation period is the signing of a peace treaty uh, with Israel and a coming ruler known as the Antichrist. Now, when you think about the rapture could take place at any moment, the rapture doesn't start the seven-year tribulation. A lot of people, I think, that hold to the pre-trib view kind of erroneously think that. Now, the rapture can happen at any moment, and sometime after that, that seven-year tribulation will start when a coming world ruler makes a covenant with Israel, some kind of a peace uh, agreement. Now, we see that in Daniel 9.27, so let me just read that verse for us. It says, and he, and the reference to the he there is back to this coming prince, the coming Antichrist. He'll make a firm covenant with the many, that's talking about the many in Israel, uh, for one week. Again, it's one week of years there, which is uh, seven years in this context. Now, it says he'll make a firm covenant that can be translated in different ways. A lot of people translate it, he shall cause a covenant to be strong. Uh, some translations have a firm covenant, a strong covenant. And this has been understood in a couple of ways. Some people just think it'll be a very strong, solid, firm covenant when it's made. Other people think it'll be a compelled covenant. That, that the Antichrist is going to come and compel the parties to come together. Others believe that this could mean that it's going to be a firm covenant. He's going to make a covenant strong that already exists. So something like what we're seeing today could be the beginnings of a covenant that the Antichrist then will come along 
and will we'll make strong. Um, Leon Wood in his commentary on Daniel says, it's some kind of non-aggression treaty recognizing mutual rights. And that's exactly what we see uh, with this treaty between Israel and the UAE, what they already have with Egypt, what they have uh, with Jordan as well. Um, also, you go over to Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, the rider on the white horse there, which I believe is the Antichrist. He's going to come forth and bring some kind of peace on the earth, I think globally. But initially, it will start with this treaty uh, with the nation of Israel. So there's a, a time of, of pseudo-peace that's ultimately coming for Israel and the land. And of course, that's a, kind of the one thorny problem out there that people have trying to been solve forever. Uh, of trying to get peace between Israel and her neighbors there to bring a Middle East peace agreement. And again, this isn't widespread yet, but it's now with, with Egypt and with Jordan and now with the United Arab Emirates, and they're saying other nations may follow. So this is, again, a very important part or a piece of the puzzle that's part of this ongoing, accelerating stage setting uh, that's taking place. And again, there's much more to happen. There may be a lot of twists and turns in this, but this is a very significant event and a significant development, I believe, uh, for us to keep watching. So thank you for joining us for this episode, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you. I hope you have a good week.